Hi, everybody. Thank you for taking the time today to come and look at my um, Festive Tech Calendar contribution and video. And um, uh, just to introduce myself, my name is Marcel Lupo, and I am a solution and DevOps architect. And I'm also a Microsoft DevOps MVP and HashiCorp ambassador. And um, I hope you've been enjoying all the great content from all the other speakers in, in this year's Festive Tech calendar. And thank you again for coming, taking the time to come and look at my video. Um, in my video today, I'm going to talk about a beta, um, a beta application or tool in GitHub called GitHub Copilot Chat. Now, you might be familiar with GitHub Copilot, and if you're not, then hopefully this video will help you um, understand how we can use this tool to basically enhance and um, make our everyday life a little bit easier by using this, uh, these tools, these artificial intelligence tools to kind of help us and assist us in our day-to-day -day work uh, in this era of co-pilots that we are in, um, in now. So let me, first of all, we're going to basically look at how we can use GitHub Copilot chat to write some Terraform code and do some interesting stuff that, that I've been playing around with using this, um, this great artificial intelligence tool. But let me first talk a little bit about what is GitHub Copilot chat. So it is, it's basically an interface, it's a, it's a chat interface that you can interact with with GitHub Copilot to ask it certain questions and receive answers. And that can be, you know, code related questions within, within GitHub or um, within your um, Visual Studio or Visual Studio uh, code. And it basically uses a um, language model analysis with, and it res um, can generate responses and output the format of code that you want it to write for you, basically. Um, now, what are use cases that you can use GitHub Copilot chat for? Well, when you're using it, you can, you can, it can almost, you can ask it questions like, can you write a test for me for my code, for example? Or can you explain the code for me a little bit better? Or maybe suggest some improvements and things like that. So, um, or you know, proposing some code fixes, for example. And we'll take a look at some of these things in a demo that I'm going to show in just a moment. So, so as you can see, I've got a instance open here of Visual Studio Code. And I have my GitHub Copilot extension already installed and enabled, as well as GitHub Copilot chat extension. So what and then you can see here I've got a few files. I've got a main.tf, an outputs file, a readme file, a variables file. They're all empty. Terraform files. Now I can come into the chat option here and uh, start asking GitHub, GitHub Copilot. I've got this chat interface here that I can start asking questions basically to GitHub Copilot chat. But what I want to do instead is I'm just going to jump to the main file here and I'm going to right click um, and start an inline chat. And then what I'll do is I'll ask uh, Copilot chat to write me some Terraform code. So I'm just going to say, write Terraform, oops, uh, Terraform code using the Azure provider to create a resource group and a storage account. So when I send that query in or that, that prompt, that ask it, uh, you'll see here that it's written for me a um, um, some code here that creates using the Azure provider. It's going to create a resource group and a storage account. Now, say for example, I did not want to use hard coded values like this. I want, I, I basically want to use variables instead. So, what I can do is I can jump into GitHub Copilot chat. And I can say, can you write my code using variables instead of hard coded values? If I ask it that question, you'll see that it's referencing the page that you see that I am on this main. Um, page here. 
So what I can, you know, what it's done, basically, what Copilot has done is it's used this main.tf file as a reference to my question. So it's actually aware of my code on this page. And as you can see, um, it's generated the, the code for me here. So what I'll do is I'll just jump to the variables page and I am just, I can either copy the code or I could just send it in directly uh, into, into my variables page. So I can see I've got resource group name, I've got location, storage account, uh, um, name, the tier, the type, the environment. And then it's also re rewritten the code here for me, which I can then pretty much copy back into my main file here. And now you'll see here, I've got my main file and I've got my variables as well. Now, say for example, I wanted some outputs. I can say, can you write some outputs for me? And again, it will reference this main file that I'm on when I'm asking my question. So let's see what it sends me or what it gives me. And there we go. There's some outputs being generated. So if I go to my outputs file, I can then just send that code into my outputs here. So now I've got my resource group name as an output. I've got the resource group location as an output. Uh, the storage account name, and maybe the primary access key. And you'll see there that it's actually made that as a sensitive value for me, which is quite nice. Um, so I can save all my files now, and I've got a main file, a variables file, an output file. This all looks really brilliant. But say, for example, someone was going to come and look at my code, and they didn't really understand what my code does. So what I can do is I can highlight a bit of code, and I can say, to GitHub, can you explain this? And again, now it's going to reference those lines that I've selected. And it's basically trying to explain my code here, for example. It's saying that a resource group is going to be created. Um, it's given me, it's giving me a lot of valuable information here about um, about this bit of code. It says there that it's an act, this active selection of code defines an, an Azure uh, storage account resource, for example, um, which is quite, quite nice. Um, but say, for example, I wanted to make this a little bit more understandable for maybe, maybe I want to uh, make some comments in my code. So what I can do is I can actually, again, just by <clears throat> focusing this, this uh, on this file, I can say, can you write uh, some comment, some, uh, can you write some useful comments in my code? So if I um, give that and then what I can do now is I can send that in instead and now I have put quite a lot of nice comments for you know so this is saying this is going to use the Azure provider um, the you know what is the name of the resource group the location of the resource group so it's it's commented my code for me to make it a lot more handy maybe for someone else who's trying to read my code and trying to figure out what uh, what my code is trying to do say for example, there was a bug in my code. So say for example, I had locations instead of location as a variable. Now, a small little issue like that, you might not might not be, you know, straight away noticed. Maybe it was a little a typo or you pressed an incorrect key maybe on a on a on your keyboard or something like that. What is quite handy about uh, Copilot is I can ask it can you find any bugs in my code? Um, bugs or issues in my code. 
And then again, it's going to analyze my file. And as you can see, as you can see, it is saying that looking at your code, there seems to be a small inconsistency with variable names. In the Azure resource group resource block, you're using locations instead of location, which you've defined earlier. So as you can see, then it regenerates the code for me using the right uh, value. So if I take that out, uh, that bit of code, and send it back in, now you can see I don't have the issue anymore with, with my code there. Um, so this is quite, quite handy. And it's really, really useful um, uh, uh, little tool and assistant that you can kind of use uh, in your day-to-day -day work. So say, for example, I now wanted to create some readme documentation for my, um, for my code here. Uh, I can then now ask it, again, I'm focusing on my file, the main file, which is containing my resource group and my storage account. And I'm just gonna say, can you write a handy and useful uh, markdown file for me to explain the code and um, make it easy to understand, uh, make it easy for others to understand what my um, code is doing and how they can use this code. Uh, let's see what that comes up with. Again, now it's gonna um, uh, create for me a quite a cool MD file. So it's gonna say, sure, here's a basic um, readme file that explains the code. Now let's see, and if I jump now to my readme file, that I've got the empty readme file here, and I send that in, you can now see I've got a Terraform Azure storage account configuration. This Terraform configuration creates a Azure resource group and storage account within that resource group. Uh, resources are the story, uh, resource group and the storage account, the variables, um, it even gives me a little bit of a usage, like I can install Terraform, clone the repository, update the variables file, do the, do the Terraform plan, uh, init plan and apply to basically deploy this, uh, these resources in Azure. Um, and what are the outputs that I'm going to get? Um, and if I go and save all that, now we can see I've got a really nice main file, which is really well defined and commented. Um, my outputs, I've got a nice readme file and my variables all written for me in quite a professional way. And this is a really, really handy uh, uh, assistant that I could now use to basically um, write, um, you know, make my code even better by adding more things in. So for example, what I can do, um, is I can start another inline chat here. Uh, let's say, um, uh, I would like to add a log analytics workspace uh, to my code. And as you can see here, it's now basically created my log analytics workspace for me. Uh, but as you can see, I don't have the variables for the log analytics workspace. So what I can do is I can jump back into the Copilot chat and I can say, can you write my variables for my log analytics? for my log and analytics work space. And it will only reference the uh, 
variables that I require here, which is these three, the work and log analytics works by name, the skew, and the retention in days that I want. So what I can do now is I can copy these variables and I can go and add them into my variables file. And as you can see now, my um, uh, log analytics work, workspace files are uh, has got variables. But say, for example, I wanted to do some um, some extra comments on this, I can then say, uh, can you write some comments for my log analytics workspace? And again, it will reference only the, the code that I want. And then what I can do is I can take that out and use this one instead. And now I've got nice comments as well for my log analytics workspace. Uh, and that basically concludes the, the demo that I wanted to show you, how you can use GitHub Copilot chat to really enhance your, your working uh, uh, practice when you're writing code and things like that. So when it comes to using uh, uh, Copilot, it can be really, really handy for you in your day-to-day -day life. But there are some limitations as well to GitHub Copilot chat. So for example, um, it has got limited scope. So what I mean by that is it's only being tried, trained, I mean, it's being trained on a large body of code, but still has a limited scope maybe um, to handle really complex code structures or obscure programming languages. And this tool is still in a beta phase. So as time progresses, it's obviously going to get improved and get better at what it's doing. But for, at the moment, it's pretty good. Um, um, I would also say that be very careful when it comes to uh, getting AI to write your code for you, because you need to be aware um, that the code, there might be some security risks in the code. So always review your code. Um, don't just take the code that it generates make sure double check that it complies to your security requirements um, and things like that so you know it can sometimes give you inaccurate inaccurate code as well it's not going to be a bulletproof solution so what i would say is when you're using um, github copilot chat i would use it more as a more as a assistant really rather than um, a solution to do write my code for me. It, it, it greatly enhances your productivity by uh, doing this stuff for you. Like for example, writing the readme file, that's really, really handy. Um, you know, it saves a lot of time to uh, uh, basically write all this code because it can generate very large pieces of code for you. And you almost become like just a reviewer of your of that code and you can review your own code and, and make it more, you know, as complex or as, um, difficult you can tweak it as you want um and then yeah with that with that uh that brings me to the end of my chat and i wanted to uh say thank you very much for for the time and good luck with github copilot and github copilot chat as well thank you very much for for joining and i hope you enjoy the rest of the other speaker sessions on this year's festive ca uh, tech calendar thank you very much <laughs>